Hi guys, Micro here. This is my guide to killing Turoth with a Cedar Sight. Doing this next year around 3 million GP an hour and 250,000 farming XP an hour. So let's get right into it. Starting off as always with the requirements. You need 55 Sire to kill Turoths. I would recommend mid to high level in range or mage. Around 75 plus in both of those would be perfect. 74 farming or higher would be the best so you can get all of the XP from most of the seeds that they drop. If you don't have the farming level of the seed that the seed aside breaks down, you won't get XP for it. So it's important to note that you do want to have around 74 farming or higher. You can get the seed aside from Cabbage Face Punch minigame or player own farms with beans. On top of this, 61 summoning helps for a smoke devil. This familiar does extra AoE damage and helps a ton. Looking at the setup, I have a setup for range, mage, and I showcase the inventory that you want to use. For range, ascension crossbows with ascension bolts damage these perfectly. If you don't have ascension, something like a royal crossbow with royal bolts also would work. For magic, you want to use a staff of light with the slayer dart spell. That means you want to take the runes needed for slayer dart in your rune pouch. I take some pieces of the farming outfit for additional XP. I take one augmented piece of armor. This augmented piece of armor has biting and scavenging on it, as you can see to the right of my screen. Scavenging is super helpful as the components are really, really nice, and biting for the extra crit chance will deal more damage. More crit means more chance of one-shotting monsters. And on your weapons, you want to be sitting with Precise 3, Equilibrium 2, and Karamin 3. If you don't have Karamin 3, it won't be the end of the world, but it definitely helps a lot. It makes your chain or your ricochet hit an additional three targets. I've found the best gloves here to be Cinderbanes, because if you don't kill them in one shot, Cinderbanes finish them off quite a lot of the time, which is really helpful. If you don't have the money for Cinderbanes, you can just take another piece of the farming outfit for another 1% XP boost. I take a Demon Horn Necklace for infinite prayer from burying the bones with Bone Crusher every time one dies. Luck of the Dwarves for rare drop table chance and an illuminated god book for passive stats, etc. When it comes to the inventory, I take overloads, I take aggression potions, smoke devil pouches. Like I said before, the smoke devil does AoE damage and it helps a ton with kills an hour. That means that you want to take the smoke devil scrolls and you want to have it auto cast those and fill it up when it uses up all 500. I take a potion that can restore my stats. I take a replenishment, but a super restore would be fine. That's just used whenever I need to renew my familiar for some summoning points to do so. I take the clue carrier because these are actually very good for hard clues. They're about half as good as hellhounds, but it's a nice thing to have. A herb bag to fill it up with herbs if I do any looting. A portable fairy ring to get the stoner jazz buff and to teleport straight to the dungeon. I do take a heated tea flask because the amount of times I've gone back with an aggro pot, those basilisks will reduce all of your stats. This heated tea flask will get rid of the aggro pot if you go back with one active, drink this, and then you won't get your stats lowered. I take some weapon poison plus buses and a spring cleaner. When it comes to my cedar side, bone crusher, charmin imp, and gold accumulator, they're all on my tool belt. So if you don't have them tool belted, bring them in your inventory. And that's it for the setup, let's get into the method. You wanna go to the fairy ring DKQ. DKQ is the Glacor Cave. You want to go there and get your Stoner Jazz buff, which will make you deal 3% more damage inside the Slayer Dungeon where you kill the Turoffs. Any extra damage is good. Then you can use the Fairy Ring you're standing on in order to teleport to the dungeon. The dungeon's Fairy Ring code is AJR, and that will teleport you straight outside the Fermanic Dungeon. If you don't have a portable Fairy Ring, you can just use any Fairy Ring on the map to teleport around. There is one just north of the Yanil Lodestone, which is super helpful. You just want to run through this cave. If you have the agility level for the shortcuts, use those. If you don't, just run around until you get to the Turoffs. One thing I want to note with the Smoke Devil Familiar, you want to use your scrolls on him and he'll hold 500. But in order for him to automatically cast his special attack, you need to go to your Familiar interface, right click the special attack bar, set auto fire rate to 1. That means it will always cast its special attack whenever it can. Then you just literally stand in the middle with an aggro pot with your overload, use soul split, tier 95 prayer, just DPS them down as fast as you can with a decent AoE bar. All you really have to do is make sure you're topping up your aggro pots and overloads every 6 minutes and topping up your weapon poison plus plus every 12 minutes. And of course remembering to up the scrolls in your familiar once you choose your special attack a decent amount. 
This is the bar that I use. It seems to work pretty well. Obviously, some people might have slight iterations of this bar, but this is what I've used to get 250k farm and experience an hour here. Very nice, very effective, and such a nice AFK way to get your gains, to be honest. This is why I bring the clue carrier as well. They do drop hard clues. They drop them probably about at half the speed of Hellhounds. So you're looking at around 12 to 13 an hour here. So if you do like doing clues and you want to get your farming up at the same time, these are a very good option. Obviously, make sure your seed aside is breaking down everything so that you're getting all of the XP from the seeds and they're not dropping on the floor. That's how you get your farming XP here. Seed aside is breaking them down to give you XP. Because you kill so many an hour, you get big XP. Even without looting as well, you get some decent passive GP with your gold accumulator and your spring cleaner. As you can see on my room metrics pro, I was getting 280k experience an hour using range with the setup I showed. And that will be it for today's video. Just a short one showcasing this awesome method. Hopefully it was helpful. Give it a like if it was. And until next time, see ya.